I want to show you all whether you can comfortably replace your home PC with the Raspberry Pi 5. Let's get to it. Can the fresh and new Raspberry Pi 5 replace your PC? Well, it's complicated. The answer is both yes and no. It all depends on what you're coming from. If you currently have the likes of an older Chromebook, then absolutely yes. However, if you're used to anything beyond that, then I would say no. The Raspberry Pi, as some of you may know, has a multitude of use case scenarios. One of my favorites is using it as a music streamer. I think I beat that horse with a stick for a little while though. The question at hand though is can this new Raspberry Pi 5 survive as a desktop PC? Well, let me show you how I put it together. The folks at Raspberry Pi were cool enough to send me a care package including the Pi 5, the official CPU cooler, a keyboard, a mouse, and power supply. I went ahead and bought a custom stand and SSD so I wouldn't have to use a micro SD card. Overall, I'm happy with how it looks. The SATA to USB cable that connects the SSD is pretty cool too. I did order a 256 gigabyte SSD from Team Group on Amazon, however, it came DOA. So I pulled an SSD out of another project and just used that. It's kind of a bummer because I really wanted to say great things about the Team Group stuff, especially since I am considering using their product products on my new creator build that I'm working on, big stuff. Oh well, if you guys have some insight on team group stuff, comment down below. Uh, get my hopes up, please. I went with Ubuntu for Pi instead of Raspberry Pi's OS because I've always wanted to work on a Linux machine. It was easy to download and flash onto the SSD. After powering up the Pi, I was up and running in just minutes. I really liked the simplicity of Ubuntu and its UI looked really cool. I connected the Pi via HDMI to my LG monitor right behind me and away I went. Most will read the specs, some will understand them, some won't. I'm going to explain the Raspberry Pi 5 in the most basic elemental way so everyone is on the same page. Imagine the Raspberry Pi 5 as a small but powerful computer. Much more advanced than the earlier version, the Raspberry Pi 4. At the heart of this computer is the processor, which is like its brain, made by a company named Broadcom. This processor is quite special because it works like an efficient little office with four workers. Each of these workers can do their tasks really fast, at a speed measured in gigahertz, similar to how we measure the speed of a car. The, the higher Sorry, the higher the gigahertz, the faster the worker. In the Raspberry Pi 5, these workers operate at a speed of 2.4 gigahertz, which is quite fast compared to the older model, which is only 1.5 gigahertz. Now, there's something called cache memory, not cash as in cash money, but cache memory. Cash money records taking over for the 9-9 in the 2000s. You can think of it like a worker's desk where they keep the tools and information they need to work quickly and efficiently. The Raspberry Pi 5 has improved the size and quality of these desks, allowing the workers to be more efficient than in the previous model by leaps and bounds. Also, the computer has gotten a major upgrade in its graphics department. It's like upgrading from an old plasma to the latest HD TV, making everything look much better and run much smoother. This is thanks to a new, more powerful graphics processor, a 12 core video core V2 GPU clocked at one gigahertz. The GPU is estimated to be two to two and a half times faster than the one in the Pi 4. Another interesting thing about the Raspberry Pi 5 is that it has a unique design feature. It includes a special chip that manages its connections and data transfers like USB ports and camera interfaces. This is a bit like having a specialized manager in an office who ensures everything runs smoothly, like your HR department. <laughs> For storing all its data, the Raspberry Pi 5 still uses a micro SD card. However, they did introduce a new way to connect even faster storage devices like solid state drives, offering more options for storing large amounts of data quickly. A single PCI Express 2.0 lane was added to it. In addition to storage devices, the applications are quite vast once developers start tinkering around with this PCI Express slot. In a nutshell, the Raspberry Pi 5 is like a small, super efficient computer that's been upgraded in almost every way to perform tasks faster and more efficiently than its predecessor. Okay, now having covered the basics, I'd like to dive into some performance benchmarks I conducted on this setup. The Wi-Fi capabilities are impressively fast, clocking in at 164.5 megabytes per second for downloads and 108.8 megabytes per second for uploads, which is remarkably quick. I also put the Inland SSD I installed through its paces 
and it returned a respectable average read speed of 272.1 megabytes per second. This speed could potentially be higher with a more robust connection method than the economical sated USB cable I used. But considering the investment, I'm quite satisfied with the 272 megabytes per second performance. On paper, this system promises solid performance and it generally lives up to that. However, during my tests, I did encounter some hiccups. Wait, 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 wait. what? For instance, when I launched Firefox, there was a noticeable delay. It wasn't the swift, seamless experience I was expecting or anticipated. Loading websites took longer than I expected. I tested out YouTube as well. After a bit of a wait, videos played beautifully in 4K. On the other hand, using Ubuntu's word processor in LibreOffice was a smooth experience with no lag or issues, performing adequately for basic computing tasks comparable to like an older Chromebook. It's not something that would compel you to replace uh, your current setup, but it's decent for simple activities like word processing and web browsing, although a mobile phone might actually be better a better experience for these tasks. The keyboard and mouse that came with the setup have a somewhat cheap and plasticky feel, not something I'd use long-term. However, they do have a certain playful charm in their design. Functionality-wise, both the mouse and keyboard performed reliably and responded well to the inputs. I particularly enjoyed the aesthetic contrast of the white and raspberry colors. Just a heads up to keep those peanut buttery fingers clean before using these products. I also picked up a super cool stand from Amazon specifically for holding the Pi and the SSD. It fits them perfectly and adds a cool like industrial vibe to it, creating a sort of deconstructed look. It's a small addition, but it really enhances the overall appearance and functionality of the setup. And I'm just easily amused and I love it. Despite all of these observations, my appreciation for the Raspberry Pi's architecture remains strong. Given its size and price point, it's an extraordinary little device. I'm excited to explore other projects with the Pi 5, like setting up a NAS drive or possibly a media server. It was a fun build nevertheless, and it's great to have this compact machine on hand for various uses. Plus, I'm really fond of Ubuntu. I actually liked it, I never used it before. It's minimalist aesthetic, is appealing, and it's overall user-friendly. If there's a special project you'd like for me to explore using this system, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, create some chaos with the like button. And here we go. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel. Only 8% of my viewership is subscribed, so please, Help a brother out and ring the bell to get notified every time new video is born. With all that said and done, my friends, I'll see you on the next one. Take care.